Sleep is something so many people struggle with, but our own ABC News live anchor Diane Macedo has done a deep dive for all of the insomniacs out there, right here, sharing how she overcame her own sleep struggles. Her new book, The Sleep Fix, it's called, aims to help others solve their sleep issues. Today we're looking at what Diane does each day to help aid her own sleep. We're going to talk to her live in just a moment, but first take a look. Good morning. It is about 6.25 a.m. and I am up before my alarm clock, which is the norm for me, even though I am a night owl, because I wake up at the same time every day. It's a little bit of wiggle room, but pretty much same time every day, even on weekends. And here's what happens if I don't wake up on my own. What'd you say? Wanna get out. You wanna get out? Yeah. Why? Because I'm hungry. You're hungry? Yeah. Okay, shall we feed you? Yeah. Should I feed you breakfast? Yeah, because I'm hungry. Can't blame him. My other alarm clock. Breakfast time now, I have about a two minute window where my son just left to school and my daughter's about to wake up. So I am grabbing my protein heavy breakfast uh, because even though you might think it's better to have carbs earlier in the day so you can burn them off before bed, sleep experts actually say if you have trouble sleeping, it's better to eat protein earlier in the day and have complex carbs later in the day because protein will help you build up tryptophan in the body and then carbs actually help to release that tryptophan to the brain, which helps you feel good and helps you feel drowsy. Now it's time for hair and makeup and you might notice the light therapy lamp here. I use this when I brush my teeth first thing in the morning and wash my face and then I turn it back on when I'm doing my hair and makeup and all it's doing is mimicking the sunlight and telling my brain that it's time to be awake. And if you're someone who struggles to fall asleep early and struggles to wake up early, this is one of the most powerful things you can do to help ensure that you start getting wake signals at the right time, but also start getting sleep signals at the right time. And yes, mine is mounted on two rolls of toilet paper and a tissue box. Don't judge me. All right, time for a little caffeine now. It's late morning uh, and this is an energy drink that I like. Now, I don't have this every day. I just kind of use it when I feel like I need a boost. But I wanted to show you that one, most people will not have to quit caffeine in order to address their sleep issues. And two, if you are gonna have caffeine, because of the way caffeine works, it's actually more effective a little bit after, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, or however long you can wait after you wake up, rather than drinking it first thing in the morning. It is evening time now, and what are we doing? Watching We're watching Wreck It Ralph. And even though you might hear a lot about screens and how bad they are for their, your sleep, most sleep clinicians actually tell me that watching screens is fine, particularly if you're watching TV because you're far away from the screen. And if I start using my phone or use some other screens, then I will often take some other measures uh, to help me out there, like lowering the brightness on the screen, lowering the blue light levels on the screen, um, or turning the screen black and white so that it's not so addictive, so I don't end up scrolling and scrolling for Instagram for hours. And so that's how I use screen time in the evening without uh, having it harm my sleep. And so far, so good. So I'm about to brush my teeth, and this is the light in my bathroom right now. It's just a nightlight. And it basically means that I can brush my teeth or get ready, do anything else that I need to do without turning this bright thing on, which will wake me up. Oh, yeah. And there you have it. This is the last part of my day. Baby snuggles and bedtime. And listen, I might not get a great night's sleep tonight, but chances are if that happens, it'll be because this little lady needs me, not because I can't sleep. Sweet dreams. <laughs> what a sweetie, and what great <laughs> tips there. Diane joins me now. So, uh, Diane, I, I'm, I'm going to go get the, the light, first of all, if that, if that helps a lot. But let me, let me just uh, broaden it out. 
I've heard you say the first step to fixing your sleep problems, if you've got them, is find out what's keeping you awake. So what in your case, what was keeping you awake? It is, it is key, and in my case, I knew that one of the things keeping me awake was my circadian rhythm. And that just meant that I was trying to sleep because of my work schedule. I was trying to sleep when my body wanted to be awake, and I was trying to be awake when my body naturally wanted to be asleep. And it's like having jet lag, only you're jet lagged all the time. And this doesn't just apply to shift workers. If you're a night owl, who has normal hours, you probably struggle with this. And if you're a very early morning oriented person and you have an evening shift, the same thing can happen just in the other direction. Um, so there are things you can do obviously to address that problem if that is what's keeping you awake. And that raises the question, so how do you, how do you diagnose uh, what is keeping you awake? How do you know? I mean, the best way, obviously, you see a sleep specialist, et cetera, but a really good indication that this is your problem is if you sleep fine, if you have trouble sleeping during the week, but then you sleep fine on weekends when you can do it on your schedule. That's a good sign that it's your circadian rhythm that's keeping you awake. And we can often fall into a pattern where we enjoy those later hours, because for most of us, later hours on the weekends. And then come Sunday, we have a really hard time falling asleep again, because our body has now adjusted to where our natural rhythm wants to be. And so we spend the whole week kind of jet lagged, catching back up with where our work schedule demands we sleep, only to hit the weekend again and do it all over again. And so you can get into this pattern of what sleep scientists call social jet lag. Uh, that's what you call it. I, I now know what to call the way I feel half the time. <laughs> so uh, a lot of us can't identify with these issues. What are some uh, top tips uh, for this to help us out? Well, you actually saw some of them there in my routine. You know, try to wake up at roughly the same time on weekends as you do during the week. And you don't have to be a drill sergeant about it, but ideally, if you can keep it within 45 minutes, your wake-up times on the weekday and weekends, that's the best. Um, using bright light exposure at times that you need help feeling awake can be huge. And for most people, this will be first thing in the morning because most people need help waking up early. So for people who struggle with waking up too early, you'll, you'll want to use um, that bright light in the evening. But for most of us, first thing in the morning, that bright light, like you see there, is huge. And then using darkness or limited light at the right times. Anytime you want your brain to get the memo that it's time to sleep or time to prepare for sleep. So again, for most people, this will be in the four to five hours leading up to your bedtime. Hence, you see that I have a night light in my bathroom instead of turning on that bright overhead light. Uh, I keep the lights in my living room dim, if I'm, particularly if I'm watching TV or off. And I dim my phone screen and dim that, that blue light or put that blue light filter on. Uh, and I also, we didn't see this in the video, but I also have blackout shades in my room. Anything to sort of let your brain get the memo, it's nighttime, it's time to sleep. But again, for someone who struggles with waking up too early, this will apply to your morning time instead. When you wake up too early, you want to stay in dim light to help tell your brain it's not wake up time, it's still sleep time. And Diane, what do you think we've been told uh, by, by some? You should just banish screens altogether after a certain hour. You, should, you shouldn't really get that, that blue light that we're always looking at during the course of the day and that that will fix the sleep issues that you might have. What do you make of that? So if you can, if you do that and you feel good about that and that makes you feel more relaxed and it's working for you, by all means. But a lot of people, uh, sleep clinicians tell me that when they see their patients, often patients will come to them saying, you know, I'm doing all the right things, I quit caffeine, I quit screen time and I still can't sleep. And the problem is for some of us, you know, screens are how we unwind at night. And when we try to remove those screens from our routine, we fill that time by thinking and worrying more about our sleep and those thoughts and worries can actually be far more harmful for your sleep than the screen time itself which is why I wanted to give people the tools in this book that if that is the case and cutting out screen time did not help your sleep here are some other things you can do to mitigate the negative impacts including a few tricks on how to put the actual phone down so you don't get sucked into that rabbit hole where you're scrolling and scrolling past your bedtime I make sure that I always pick up a book I'll put the phone down read a few pages until the, the words start swimming around in front of my eyes, and that's when I know I'm, I'm ready to sleep. So that's a little trick well, I've that I've got. I've got a great book that'll help you do that. Terry. That's it, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.